In this episode, we're gonna go over the basics of REST Publish. So we're gonna expose an entity in a REST service, and then we're going to review the generated resources and logic. Finally, we'll go ahead and test the REST API using generated Swagger docs. So let's get started. So here I am in a domain model. This is just a basic domain model with some sales data. I've got an account and some customers and then some orders relative to that. And I want to expose the customer's entity as a REST API so that people can get data from it. All I need to do is right click on the entity inside the domain modeler and choose expose as a REST service. From here, what will happen is a, a dialog box is going to open. And in this dialog box, we'll be able to select the service that we want to use or the resource. And if we don't have a resource, we can go ahead and click the select button and create one. And I've created this REST API folder just for organization purposes ahead of time. And I'm just gonna call this REST service sales data. And once that's created, it's going to give me the customer and then I have the ability to choose a primary key. And when I choose a key for doing lookups in the REST API, it, it uh, turns on a number of additional operators and operations that I can do in addition to just the typical get and post operations of a REST API. So now I can get by a specific order, I can delete, and I can also do patches against certain items. Once that's done, Mendix takes care of the rest. It goes ahead and automatically creates all of the items that we need in order to build the REST API. So you can see that I've got my uh, resources on the left and my operations on the right. And if I look at uh, things, I can enable uh, cross-site scripting capabilities so that I can deal with that, cross-origin scripting. And if I fire up the app and we take a look at it real quick, you can see that I get a Swagger spec right out of the box, which is pretty cool because it means I can go ahead and click on this get for the customer. I can try it out, execute it real quick, and immediately I have my data results. And you can see that it's passing that back in JSON. So really cool feature here is that uh, I get that immediate gratification. And I can also do a post. Now with the post, I'm going to be adding a, a new customer. So when I try this out, I've got to fill out the different fields. And here I'm just gonna fill out some data real quick and execute again. And if I get a 201, that 201 basically says the record was created, which is great. So back in here, I'm just gonna do some cleanup real quick and put this into that customer's folder that I have. And now let's explore the endpoints a little bit. And inside the endpoints, if we start with the get endpoint, you can see that we've got our path and we've got our microflow that's assigned to it. If we look at the microflow that's assigned to the record, you can see that it's pretty much just a very simple retrieve of a list and we get the records. Now, what happens is, is that retrieve is then processed through what's called an export mapping. And the export mapping is taking the entity data and it's transforming it using what's called a message definition into the JSON object that we saw earlier. And we'll go through those uh, in another video. Anyway, if I look at the guess get for the uh, specific item, you can see that there's a parameter that I can fill out, which represents the customer ID, and that gets appended to the path at the end. And then that parameter is part of the parameters field, and you can see that it's marked as a path parameter. If we go into this microflow, we can see it's a little bit different, right? We go and we check and see whether or not that uh, customer actually exists and if that customer exists it's going to return the record and if it doesn't it will give us a message basically saying that the item doesn't exist now if we look at the post the post is a little bit different right because now we're sending information into the rest api so if we look at this item we're sending the body uh, which contains the information that has 
uh, the new customer information name, and we have to fill out some uh, parameters that could fill out uh, automatically for us, part of some HTTP headers, the location gets changed, so that when we pass the final response, we can pass that 201 and, and say that the record is created. Now again, this is all out of the box, so if you want, you can go ahead and you can uh, manipulate these microflows. And uh, an important part of the parameter you can see is we're basically taking that body, that message that we're getting, and we're making it an object, and we're instructing the import or the post to treat it as a specific entity, using the body as the microflow parameter, and then it's going to use an import mapping, which is the opposite of an export mapping. So instead of sending data out, we're going to take data in, and we're going to create the new customer record. So if we look at this import mapping, we can see we've got our message definition, very similar. Actually, it's the same message definition. And uh, we have one change, and that's where we're looking by key to make sure that if the record doesn't already exist, we'll go ahead and create a new one. Otherwise, we'll ignore it. So that uh, is essentially the basics uh, of the REST API. Last thing to just look at really quick is the message definition, which takes our entity structure and basically makes it available for us to select the different fields that we have in our table that we want to import or export as part of our REST API. Stoke your low code fever and subscribe to receive more model-driven love from Mendix.